All right, welcome everyone. It's 1215. We're going to get the session started right on time. Um, you are in the breakout session uh, focused on educators and families, roles and resources for children's literacy success. So hang with us if this is where you intend to be. If not, you might want to click on that breakout sessions uh, uh, tab over on the left hand side of the screen. Um, my name is Anna Harms. I'm the Evaluation and Research Administer Administrator sorry, <laughs> for the MyMTSS Technical Assistance Center. Um, if you are applying for sketches, um, please take note of the beginning session code that's displayed on the screen right now. Take a moment to write that down on your form. I will stop displaying the code in just a moment and then I won't be allowed to share it again um, for the rest of the session. Um, stick around all the way till the end when I'll display the ending session code after uh, Dr. Seiko and Jess are done with their session. Um, Jess and Sarah, we are so pleased to have you with us today. Um, uh, both uh, Dr. Seiko and Jess Rills have uh, presented for the TA Center in the past, and the content has been extremely well received. Uh, they bring to us a, a wealth of knowledge and experience. Both have served as teachers, as consultants um, in the area of literacy, and provided uh, a multitude of coaching, uh, technical assistance, and professional learning to educators around the nation. Um, Currently, uh, Jess Searles works for the University of Oregon in their Center on Teaching and Learning. And uh, Dr. Seiko is the Deputy Director with the National Center on Improving Literacy and is focusing specifically on um, the parent and family strand of that center's work. Um, so welcome and, and thank you all for joining us today. I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen now and allow uh, Sarah and Jess to get started. Hi everyone, good afternoon. I am Jess Searles and um, Sarah Seiko will be presenting with me. So we'll kind of do some switching back and forth between the two of us um, and we'll help each other monitor the chat. So I see lots of um, good afternoons coming in through the chat already. And if you've got any questions or comments as we go through the session today, um, feel free to drop those in the chat um, and Sarah and I will answer those as we go. Um, so again, welcome to the session on educators and families, roles and resources for children's literacy success. Um, we're really excited about being here, being with you all today. So in this session, we'll really discuss how the home environment is linked to success at school and how educators and parents or caregivers can best work together to ensure reading success for all students. Um, and we'll also take a closer look at four key actions. That's kind of how we structured the session um, together this afternoon. Those actions are learn, advocate, partner, and support. And we'll look at each of those roles and how they help students both inside and outside of school. Um, and we'll share quite a few resources today to, to help support the learn, advocate, partner, and support. I'm um, really looking at families and um, educators being co-learners, co-advocates, co-partners and co-supporters through the work that we do um, with children every day inside and outside of school. So as Anna mentioned, um, Sarah and I are both with the with INSEL, which is the National Center for Improving on Improving Literacy. Um, and the mission of the center is really to increase access to and the use of evidence-based approaches to screen, identify, and teach students with literacy-related disabilities, including dyslexia. So that's kind of the center's charge and the center's mission and all of the work that we do um, as part of the National Center. And kind of today, we'll really focus still on this mission, but really look more specifically on how family and school partnerships support students um, with literacy-related disabilities, including dyslexia. Our team um, is made up of several folks. Anna has already introduced Sarah, who is our deputy director of the center. Um, she is also the um, number three under the priority task leads. Um, she is the, fam the parent and family support task lead for the center. And then um, I, along with Carol Disson, who some of you may know as well, um, are professional development and technical assistant coaches um, through the center. So we actually, as the center, are working with um, Michigan as one of our beacon sites. 
So we've been involved in quite a bit of work in Michigan over the past few years um, in collaboration with the National Center on Improving Literacy. So it's great to be back with you all. Session objectives for today are looking at um, discussing the roles of families and educators in a comprehensive approach to reading through those four key actions of learn, advocate, partner, and support, and also to provide um, some resources and help you see where to locate those available through INSOL, which is the National Center on Improving Literacy, to really help strengthen the home school collaboration. So first we'll look at establishing a system of support. So really thinking about schools and families supporting literacy development um, of students in our classrooms. There are four organizing principles to family and um, community engagement for literacy. The first is this inclusion of families and how it relates to shared leadership. So really looking at the inclusion of families in school literacy decisions and the development of parent leaders and representatives um, and that being evident through shared leadership. So having parents and family members on um, the committees in our school buildings really factoring in to the decisions that are made um, within the school and how those decisions impact student learning and student achievement, um, in this case specifically related to reading and literacy. The second of those principles um, is looking at effective forms of school to home and home to school communications. So this two way communication, it's not always a directive coming from the school to families, but it's more of a two way street. So parents um, and families can communicate with the school openly and the school openly um, communicates with families as well. So really these effective forms of those um, school to home and home to school communications really around literacy and the programs that are happening in the school building and in a community outside of school that may be related to literacy as well. And then children's literacy progress as design. So really looking at how um, those homeschool connections can support student learning in and out of the classroom. Hey Jess, we're yeah. getting some notes in the chat that um, the slides are not changing. And so people are wondering if you could <clears throat> redo your screen share. Yeah, let me try that. Yep, I just saw that coming through. Thank you. Let me stop and share it again. Can you see that now? Awesome. Thank you. I'll keep watching that too. Awesome. Let me know if it stops again. All right, the third one. Um, is looking at education, including various mechanisms. So looking, supporting families and establishing home literacy environments, providing resources um, to support literacy development at home, and then um, providing information and resources to support um, students kind of in school and at home and making connections between those two things. So helping families connect to what's happening in the building and then also talking with families, talking with um, family members about what we can do to better support students at home. And again, having that two-way communication between the school and home and home in the school with regards to resources and support. And then lastly is the fourth one here, connections made between school, home, and community to strengthen the school literacy programs, family literacy practices, and student literacy development. So establishing those connections, um, recruiting and organizing, family and community partners um, to support literacy goals in the school building, identifying and integrating some of our community resources and their services available to strengthen school literacy programs and what we offer to students um, in and outside of school, along with family literacy practices and student learning and development um, in and outside of school. So for that to take um, place, for this kind of homeschool connection and partnership to take place, really um, looking at establishing a system of literacy support and services. Um, we do know that when there's a strong school and family collaboration, there is an effective system that um, is created from that collaboration. And that collaboration builds that um, support and sustainability. So looking at family educa and educators really working together to ensure that children have successful literacy experiences inside and outside of the school building. And that's what you can see um, kind of in this middle graphic that the system is happening in and outside of the school day. So it's not just what we do within our classrooms, but then how do we expand that um, and those learning opportunities outside of the school building through these connections as well. Um, this is especially important um, for families and educators to work together 
for students who are experiencing reading difficulties. So often students who are experiencing difficulties learning to read have specific instructional needs that are best addressed within a comprehensive approach to a literacy related service involving both the home and the school. So those students are being supported both in the school environment and then also in the home environment um, to help support their literacy needs um, as they're learning to read. And realizing too that schools and families both have important roles in these systems as we're creating um, literacy supports for students. So systems of liter literacy services and support, really the combination of activities that happen um, during and outside of the school day, that the responsibilities for that are shared across sides. So it's not one-sided. The school's not doing all the work. The families aren't doing all the work. It's that collaboration between the two um, to really build the strength on the strengths of both the school and the home to help children succeed, um, highlighting the similarities and what's going on in the school and what's going on at the home and helping making those connections um, to help the transfer of skills from the school to the home and the home to the school of the student who is learning to read. Um, often when the focus is only what happens um, inside or outside of school, instead of across these two settings, um, students miss really valuable learning opportunities between the two um, and how to transfer those skills from one setting to another um, as they're learning and developing their reading skills. So knowing that schools kind of offer as a strength direct literacy assessment, instruction, and intervention to students, and families offer um, literacy support and practice at home and in the community. So seeing the connections between those two things and helping make those connections explicit between the family and the school. The system does work best um, when in and outside of school activities are coordinated and aligned with one another. Again, helping with that att attention to transfer between school and home. So for examples, um, schools can provide families with home activities that reinforce what's happening in the school building and instruction and intervention. Um, often, some of our family members may have had negative past experiences with schools and educators. So helping to um, create a, a feeling in a community that's inviting within our school buildings so families feel they um, are needed and that their voice is important and that they're able to contribute to their child's education. And then also, um, just for educators thinking about the challenges, we're going to move into this next slide to kind of talk through those. Um, but as we look at the challenges and the opportunity, right, because there are challenges where, where families may feel disengaged, they may, may feel kind of unwelcome in our school buildings. And there's also some challenges on the educator side with communicating with families. But there's also this really cool opportunity um, to really look at our system, look at why educators and families have maybe um, struggled to build trusting and effective partnerships in the past, and thinking through that um, home and school connection really through an intentional effort to build a stronger um, kind of system in place in our schools and our, and our homes. So looking at families, again, thinking about the exposure, the experiences and the feelings that they had prior to their child being a member of our school and of our classrooms, thinking about their um, prior experiences, their prior exposure to what school may have looked like for them and some of the uncomfortable feelings that school may bring um, to the surface for them and acknowledging those, um, knowing that those exist um, and knowing that we're kind of working with those experiences being very much a reality for some of our families. For educators, some of the challenges here may be that we haven't, as educators, been um, exposed or privy to some strong examples of family engagement um, and what that could look like in our schools and how we could really foster those relationships with families. We may have received minimal training in this area or may not really see a partnership as an essential practice, as something that's really needed to really foster um, and support students that are in our classrooms and our school buildings. So kind of to counteract that, really thinking about the opportunity that's there. What do we have that's kind of shared across the families that are um, part of our, our school community and the educators in the school building? And thinking about some of those um, shared values and shared things that we bring to the table. So thinking about both families and educators, um, we both want our children to experience reading success. That's like a really common thing between families and schools. We want students to be successful. Um, and reading outcomes and learning to read and be literate adults. 
Also for assets, family have um, family members have really important and valuable information that they um, can share with schools. So it may be about developmental knowledge. It may be um, that they have had a reading difficulty um, when they were learning to read as well that may have an impact um, since we know family history does have an impact often on um, student achievement rates. And then schools have resources too, right? They have things to contribute. They have materials and staffing and supports to really devote to instruction and student learning. So looking at the intersection of those things and how to play um, to the strength and the shared goals of both of those. Looking at key roles in your school and family partnerships and just supporting students across the continuum. So across an MTSSR framework or an MTSS framework where we have students in receiving tier one, tier two and tier three services, how can we foster school and family partnerships across those tiers of support? And this is really getting to those four roles. So looking at learn, advocate, um, support, and kind of partnership with, and really in this slide highlighting that co-learner, co-advocate, co-supporter, and co-partnership. Um, so really looking at schools and communities being co's in this, doing the work together, through collaboration um, and networking with one another. As we look at the um, learn, we're going to zoom into these a little bit more in depth, um, piece by piece, but just kind of an overview here. Learn is really focused on families and educators as co-learners, monitors and observers. Um, for example, um, that we have families and educators who understand the parts of literacy, how children learn to read, and why students may struggle with learning to read. And then the advocate, which is co-advocate here on this slide, um, really looking at families and educators as co-advocates and models for students. So for example, here, um, it may be promoting evidence-based literacy approaches in schools and early childhood settings. So advocating that students are um, instructed using the science of reading and what we know about how the brain learns to read and making sure that those practices are in place in our schools and that those are being um, used in homes when we're working with children as well. And then we have um, the partner. So looking at your partnership, kind of that co-piece there, um, looking at really centering on families and educators um, as their co-communicators, co-communicators, co co-problem solvers, co-decision makers, so both bringing um, their voices to the table, both being respected and heard with those voices at the table. Um, for example, this may be working together within that comprehensive system of support. So we're sharing about students' um, struggles, students' successes, and problem solving with one another um, as we're all kind of bringing our knowledge to the table. And then really looking at support. Um, Co-support is really about families and educators, um, teachers, creators, encouragers, um, really supporting our students and their learning. For example, this could be providing literacy opportunities um, and reinforcing the skills being taught in school. So having to have that communication there, that co-communication between school and home for um, the home and school support to happen. We have to know what's going on in the home and know what's going on in the schools to be able to support um, in kind of a collaborative way. So that's that co-support piece. Um, regardless of the role taken by family members, families and educators inform one another and share their expertise and their knowledge about the student to support literacy learning and to promote competence from home to school and school to home. And then really it's the enhancing of those student outcomes. That's the goal of the family and the school collaboration. So again, going back to that shared um, kind of assets and shared goal is we really want students to experience success with literacy. Um, and that's kind of like why we're all here is to ensure that our students are um, learning to read and that they are becoming successful in their literacy skills acquisition. So now that we've talked about both of those, there is a poll at the bottom of your screen. If you'll scroll down, um, it's about which one of these roles, the learn, the advocate, the partner, or the support, has been the most challenging for educators and families to enact in your setting. So in the school that you are a part of as a staff member or a family um, providing that at-home support, which of these roles is most challenging in that setting? So the learn, the advocate, the partner, or the support piece. I'll give you um, a little bit to kind of click through, and we'll start looking at what your um, examples are for that.
Great, it looks like the numbers have stopped shifting um, for the most part. And even before they really started or stopped shifting, partner um, is definitely kind of the one that's in the front running here. So we have 12% of you at learn, now 11, advocate at 11, and then partner. Um, definitely the longest bar here with 72 of you saying that the most um, kind of complex and challenging um, in your buildings are partnering with, with schools and families and then support at 6%. So as we dive into content today, Sarah is going to be talking quite a bit about partner and the resources that we have for partnering. That's not uncommon, but that's a tough one. Um, so we'll dive into some resources that can help with that, as well as some learn, advocate, and support resources as well. Um, but we'll definitely hit on the partner information as we go through our session today. So the first one here is learn. So we'll kind of dive a little deeper into the learn piece first. When we're talking about learn, um, we're really looking at um, knowing that learning is difficult, learning to read is difficult for students. It doesn't happen naturally. We have to teach our brains to do it. We have to kind of wire our brains and get all of the connections in there through some really explicit and systematic teaching of some pretty foundational skills um, to help students learn to read. So we know that since this is not natural, um, it is common for students to learn how to read. And in order for that learning to happen, um, we have to understand the parts of literacy and what kind of contributes to that reading process and that learning to read. We have to understand how children learn to read and what are the complex processes that are in place for that to happen. Um, we also have to understand why a child may struggle with learning to read, right? We may have students who have difficulties with specific skills. They may have trouble breaking words into sounds or maybe have trouble comprehending or understanding what they read. Um, students may have difficulties because the instruction that we're providing in the school and then kind of reinforcing at home through that partnership may not actually be the instruction that that particular child needs. Um, so accounting for that mismatch and trying to kind of correct that mismatch that may be there. Um, and then there may be vision or hearing issues that interferes with learning to read that we definitely need to take into account, investigate more if that's something that is causing reading difficulties. And then understanding the signs of at risk for reading difficulties. So when we know students are having trouble um, learning to read, understanding what those reading difficulty kind of at risk signs may be. Examples of that would be um, students who, or children, if you notice it in your home environment, um, students who are having difficulty noticing and naming rhymes, so maybe um, having difficulty telling you words that rhyme with cat, for instance, um, that could be an indicator, um, an early indicator of a reading difficulty. Um, others are noticing and playing with individual sounds and spoken words, so being able to find like the first sound in a word or identify what a word starts with or what the sound um, the word ends with um, and kind of playing around with those sounds. Naming aloud a series of familiar items like letters or numbers or colors may also be an indicator um, of, a, of a reading difficulty, kind of one of those early signs. Sounding out unknown words if students have trouble with that or having trouble um, remembering words that they've seen a lot of times before or even just remembering the ideas in a story. So if we have read aloud a student to a child and they have um, difficulty remembering something that happened on a page as we're reading it, or they have a difficult time telling us kind of what happened in the story at the end, or some of those kind of details um, are kind of the main happenings of the story, that could be a sign of an early reading difficulty as well. So just thinking about knowing those things and kind of knowing those early warning or early indicators um, and understanding that they are there and that they exist and being aware of those both in the fam in the home environment and in the school environment. So learning those, understanding those, and then being able to identify and look for those um, to talk about with the school and with the home, with the family members. So kind of overarching here, um, families and educators are able to share concerns about a child's progress with one another. So everyone is informed and can make better decisions about the, educa the child's education. So knowing what these um, struggles may be, being able to talk about them, being able to talk about ways to support that student in the classroom and in the home through that partnership and that collaboration among the school and the home. A couple of resources here. 
Um, one is learning about your child's reading development toolkit. Um, we have several toolkits on the National Center's website. I'm going to demonstrate for you where some of these resources live. Um, this particular resource really expands upon information in our literacy brief and infographic around learning about um, a child's reading development. In the tutorial that's provided online, families learn about evidence-based information, about how um, a child's reading development from preschool through adolescence develops. Um, it's just an interactive online experience to really build and learn about um, how reading takes place in the brain. Um, it provides a table of contents that can be used to really kind of hone in on what you want to learn more about. So you don't have to watch the whole tutorial. You can kind of pick and choose the areas that are applicable to you or that kind of pique your interest um, as you're looking at the infographic or the um, tutorial. Other resources are available too. I'll demo one of these so you can see where to find it on the website. But we have ones um, tutorials through the INSELS website on specific reading skills that can be used in kind of a school setting or a home setting. Um, there's one on phonological awareness, one on fluency with connected text, one on alphabetic principle and phonics. And these really hone in on really specific reading skills. Um, all of the resources are grounded in research and evidence. All of them are free for you to access um, at home or in a school setting. Um, so they're really user friendly. Again, that table of contents is there for you to jump to what you kind of interests you and what you need to build your own knowledge around um, in the school or the home environment. So I'm going to switch my screen so I can show you kind of where these live and how to navigate to these as we go through. Um, some of the resources that we'll share with you today. So on our um, National Center website, um, you can go to improvingliteracy.org, and I'll drop that into the chat box so you have our website um, that you can access and kind of bookmark as well. But as you, when you go to the website there, um, on the website, we have a, plan, a little place at the top in the menu bar called Tools and Resources. If you click on that tools and resources link, there's implementation toolkits. And that is what we were just looking at as these info implementation toolkits. So if you click on that implementation toolkit website, there are lots and lots and lots of them um, full of content. So looking at alphabetic principle, these are one that we were just looking at on the other side, those um, specific reading skills ones. There's This is the families and the uh, children's with partnering between families and schools. There's the one on fluency, learning about your child's reading development, and, and the list goes on. So there's quite a few that live there, and we'll talk about more of them as we go through the session together today. I'll just click into this fluency one so you can see what that toolkit looks like once you get into there. So with fluency and connected text, each one kind of gives you the learning objectives for the toolkit and what the content um, includes. So definitions and a few overviews, some related um, additional resources and then resources for both teachers and families. And as you scroll down, has little bookmarks that you can click on um, for what you're looking for, what information you're trying to find or what kind of resource. Definitions that are used within that um, specific tutorial. And then each one um, has kind of a brief overview. This one is a big five under five. So I'll play it so you can kind of get a feel for what the videos um, feel like in some of these modules, and they'll look at a couple of the other resources as well. What do we mean when we talk about fluency? Fluency with text is reading words with no noticeable cognitive or mental effort. It's when the fundamental skills are so automatic that it doesn't require conscious attention. So what does that mean exactly? Let's give some examples. People can perform many tasks with automaticity or automatically, like walking, riding a bike, or driving a car. Fluency, like riding a bike, develops through practice. Students go from sounding out individual letters and letter combinations to reading words quickly and effortlessly with lots of opportunities for practice until reading the words can be performed with a high rate of success. So you can see how that relates to the learn. It's kind of talking through 
what fluency is, um, and then it gets into kind of the resources um, around the, mod the remainder of the page to help students and support students in their um, building of fluency. So you have supporting fluency, there are infographics there on the website, as well as some examples um, of what fluent readers sound like um, that are pulled from our resource repository on the National Center for Improving on Improving Literacy. And then there are some resources for teachers specifically um, from the resource repository. All of these have been curated. So any resource that you find on ENSEL's website has gone through a process to be vetted before it gets added, um, that it is grounded in research and evidence. Um, so you know what you're finding on the National Center's website is reputable information, which isn't necessarily always the case with a quick Google search. So it's a great place to come to to know that you're getting some reputable resources. And then the last one is resources for parents and families. So these are things that parents and families can access on their own. It could be something that you provide um, kind of training in and support with from the from the school, helping students locate or families locate these resources um, and support their students at home. So lots and lots of information in each toolkit. Um, and then this one's all curated for fluency in mind. And then there are others that we saw as we got into those um, implementation toolkits that focus on other areas of reading. So I'll go ahead and screen share again to get back to the PowerPoint so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Um, and looking in your next kind of resource here is um, a literacy skills checklist and curriculum based measures at home. So you may have heard of like an oral reading fluency or um, a nonsense word reading fluency that's called a curriculum based measure. And there's a resource um, on the INSA website that gets into how to kind of use information um, and administer and look at um, curriculum based measures at home. So both of those resources are more resources um, through the National Center that really support that family um, school connection around the learn component um, for, for students in our buildings. And I'm going to turn it over to Sarah to start us off with Advocate. Great, thanks so much, Jess. Hi, everyone. Um, so Jess did a great job of talking through that first key role that families and educators can play, which was learn. And you got to see many of the ENSEL resources that we have associated with that role. So now we're going to hone in on the advocate role. And when we talk about the advocate role and operationalize it, these are sort of the ideas that we want to highlight for you. Next slide, please. Thanks. The first one is to interact regularly and talk about your common experiences. So we know that advocacy can be difficult um, and that it really does rely on um, both the school staff and the family members to be engaged and to interact frequently to build that trusting relationship that allows for that advocacy to take place. Um, and so in a little bit, after we talk about ag advocacy, we're gonna talk about partners, partnering, which really is a prerequisite in some respects to um, advocating effectively. So sharing resources between home and school can be an effective advocacy strategy. And so oftentimes we think about maybe the school staff member being the one sharing a resource with family members, but we see this really as being bi-directional advocacy, which means that um, when the family member has a good grasp of how children learn to read, for example, um, as Jess talked us through, then they might feel more confident in being able to seek out and share resources with the school staff themselves. And so this could be resources from ENSEL that they want to bring forth and share, um, but it also could be from some of the other resources that you might find from credible sources in our resource repository. Um, something else that is an important advocacy strategy is really to collaborate jointly to review and improve supports for all children. And so advocacy can take many forms and many shapes. 
And it can be at the individual level for a family member advocating for their child, but it also could be advocating for a group of children with similar needs. Um, and it could be advocating perhaps for evidence-based practices in, in the school to benefit all children. And so we think about um, what those supports look like for children who may be struggling to read as a form of advocacy, the of evidence-based programs and instruction and interventions and the use of data to make decisions about children's instruction. All are areas that are ripe for advocacy. So next I want to talk to you a little bit about the resources that are available um, from ENSEL around the advocate role. So currently we have a literacy brief and infographic available. It's targeted for families and it's called Advocating for My Child's Literacy Needs. And it's a great introduction to the, to the role of advocate. Um, and I think that if you are school staff members, perhaps this is a resource that you might want to share with family members, but also if you're a family member yourself, it's a great way to understand what a literacy advocate is and the different ways that you can go about advocating. Um, most of our resources start with a literacy brief and an infographic as an introduction to a topic. And this topic is no different. This topic of advocate, um, we will be soon releasing an implementation toolkit that expands and extends the information in the advocate literacy brief and infographic that's currently available through ENSEL. And so it's going to have the same look and feel to the other implementation toolkits that you saw when just walked you through the ENSEL website. Um, and the nice thing about the implementation toolkit on this topic is um, the tutorial, the interactive tutorial that will be included in the toolkit will have both a family advocacy track and a self-advocacy track. And the self-advocacy track is really targeted to um, middle school, high school students, and young adults, and learning how to advocate for their own literacy needs. And so um, it's one of a few products that ENSEL has that's targeted directly to the student. So stay tuned for the Advocate Implementation Toolkit Hopefully it will be released publicly sometime later this month or early September. And you can sign up for our newsletter on the ENSEL website so you can be kept up to date on all of our newest resource releases or also um, follow us in our various social media platforms where you will get notifications as well. So now we're going to shift to the third role, which is partner. And as you indicated from your poll, this is often the most difficult role shared by both school staff and family members alike. And this is because part, the ability to partner well depends on so many um, factors being in place. And as I mentioned with the advocate role, positive homeschool relationships are really key for supporting children's literacy development. And there's many ways that we can partner. So one way that we often think about partnering is when we have children who are having reading difficulties and wanting to address the concerns about a child's literacy skills and academic progress together. And we know that schools and families really do rely on each other. Um, and we need to capitalize off of what happens both in and out of school to best support children, especially those with reading difficulties. Um, Thinking about the kinds of activities and tools that we can provide to families to use at home 
is really an important aspect of partnering. And so being um, transparent and upfront with what it is your children are learning in relation to the curriculum and standards, and then providing families with one um, simple, easy to follow activity that they can do at home to reinforce the skills that children are learning to master. And it's it's really great to think of the home environment as additional opportunities for children to practice skills that they're mastering. And so families can build those practice opportunities for their children and facilitate that experience for their children. Um, if the school provides them with with the materials and directions and how to do so. And this really depends on the ability to communicate and interact often between home and school. None of this, of course, can happen if that communication and the interactions aren't happening frequently. And the ability in those discussions and interactions to really talk about literacy instruction and in intervention specific to the, to the needs of the children. So families and schools have a clear understanding of what those literacy goals are, um, negotiating those goals, those shared goals between home and school, and then providing ac access to activities and opportunities that build those skills and lead to those learning goals is really important. And then finally, again, addressing those concerns together. And parents really, parents and family members really can um, provide great feedback back to the school. And so they can discuss, you know, what a child has, what their child has learned and what skills he or she is still working on and share their understanding of their children's learning needs and tell the school what activity or tasks are giving their children trouble at home and how they helped. And it is important for families to learn about the school's system of learning support. So when we think about the MTSS, MTSSR, do parents understand what that is and what supports are available to their child and to other children? Next slide, please. So here are two implementation toolkits that relate to the partner role. The first one that I want to mention is our Families and Schools Partnering for Literacy Success Implementation Toolkit. So this toolkit was designed to help families and schools work together to support children's literacy success in and out of school. Um, so this is really, again, a toolkit that extends and expands upon the infographic that introduces the partnership role. And then another related toolkit that I want to highlight is our remote literacy learning toolkit. And this toolkit was debuted last summer. Um, the impetus for this toolkit, of course, was um, the effects of COVID-19 on interrupted instruction and learning recovery related to literacy. And so this toolkit in particular focuses on the conditions that need to be in place between home and school so they can effectively join efforts to support children's literacy growth in remote or blended learning environments. Um, we saw more than ever uh, how important partnerships became when we were faced with atypical learning conditions and how much really families and schools needed to communicate well and interact well to support children's learning um, as the brick and mortar concept of school no longer um, was you know, the driver during the past year and a half. So please do um, check out both of these toolkits as you think specifically about addressing 
the um, or refining your partnership practices. Next slide, please. So two um, infographics that I want to highlight from the partnership implementation toolkit are from our route to reading series. So many of our implementation toolkits that are designed with families in mind have a, have infographics from a series that we call route to reading. And so all of these infographics have this um, car metaphor to them for driving the topics and content. And this one is called inspect the manual. And we have an infographic for schools and one that's designed for families. And what if you are school staff, we encourage you to look at the inspect the manual for schools and think about how you um, and the infographic for families. The one for families has a series of questions that we encourage families to ask of school staff. And then the school version of it has statements that we ask schools to consider as they think about partnering and their instruction and intervention practices. So what we encourage schools to do is to look at the family infographic and say, how would I respond to these questions if a family member were to come um, forth and ask these questions and begin to articulate in a family-friendly way what your responses would be? Um, so we encourage you to do that with a leadership team um, as a way to begin to ensure that you are conveying um, information that is accessible to families around instruction and intervention. Next slide, please. And then another uh, infographic from her Route to Reading series that I want to highlight from our partnership toolkit is Form a Pit Crew. And we have a version again for schools and families. And the focus of this infographic is really about addressing needs together. And we know that when families and schools work together to address needs, it promotes faster development and catches trouble spots earlier. So the idea is to see if you and families can find a solution that you both can support. So this ENSEL infographic really gives tips for enhancing family school partnerships to address concerns together. And similarly to what I mentioned before, you can take the family version, see the kinds of questions that families might ask around addressing concerns about their children's reading development, and then see if you can articulate responses to those questions in a variety of ways. Next slide, please. And then there's two additional infographics that I'd like to highlight from this partnership toolkit. This one is called All Systems Go. And really, if we are to think about enhancing effective homeschool partnerships for literacy, we want to think of these partnership practices as systemic practices, ones that are going to endure over time, despite competing priorities that may come up, despite changing circumstances. And in order for those practices to endure, they really do need to be embedded into the way that we do things in the school and the district. So you can um, use this All Systems Go infographic to reflect on the degree to which your family engagement practices for improving literacy outcomes are systemic. And we know that district-wide family and community engagement requires systems and structures of support and alignment to district and school literacy goals and strategic direction. So implemented effectively, systemic family engagement continuously builds district and school capacity. So again, perhaps um, your district literacy team, your school-based literacy team might want to do a little self-assessment to see um, to what degree your practices are truly systemic. And we hope that this infographic will help you in doing so. And then the final infographic that I want to share with you 
from this toolkit um, is the check the road conditions infographic. And this one is really one of our foundational infographics for this toolkit. It talks about the four A's. Um, this is the four A's is a quick way to think about setting the conditions for effective partnership practices. So the four A's that are defined on this infographic are approach, attitude, atmosphere, and actions. And so you can take a look at this infographic more closely to, to see what we mean by the approach, the attitude, the atmosphere, and the action. But again, we really see these as the foundation for building strong partnership practices. And then the all systems go as a way to look at if those conditions are truly systemic. Next slide, please. Okay, so we've walked through learn, we've talked through advocate and partner, and now we're going to dive into the last role, which is support. And never have assessed this role um, been more important than over the past year and a half um, when we were faced with the COVID-19 pandemic. So similar to um, being good partners in supporting children's literacy outcomes, it was really key to, for family members to understand how they can best support their children's learning when learning was taking place um, in the home environment. So whether it was virtually or hybrid, um, teachers had to rethink how they were providing their instruction in a virtual and remote environment, how they were supporting children in their literacy development, and then likewise, how family members could extend and support what their children were learning at, um, at home when school was not taking place. So a couple of the key ideas around support, and I mentioned this before, is really the importance of reinforcing skills learned at school at home. So we recommend that schools and districts focus on providing family members with activities that reinforce what children are already learning at school as opposed to introducing new skills and concepts. So this becomes a time to reflect on what truly would be practicing a skill that children are close to mastering or perhaps have mastered and need lots of additional practice versus what children are just initially learning how to do and asking ourselves if it's if we just introduce this skill or concept perhaps it's not the right type of activity or the right time to expect parents to um, engage and practice this at home and truly that we're building um, the right kinds of learning opportunities at home that set children up for success and set the family members up for success and really part of this is the ability for family members to feel like they know how to intervene when their child is perhaps having a little difficulty and providing them with the routines and strategies to help them effectively do so. We have as part of our remote literacy learning toolkit an infographic called Coaching Steps for Families and while it's part of our remote literacy learning toolkit, we think it's a great infographic um, for the summer as well. And it basically introduces the explicit instruction routine for in a way that families can implement it at home. And so it's a general routine for a family member to intervene and support their children's learning at home and can be adapted for any type of learning circumstance. So we encourage you to perhaps share that, talk, talk through that inter infographic with families um, and 
maybe even model a little bit of what that might look like, have them try it out at home with their child in a um, safe kind of learning experience and then report back. How did it go? What parts were tricky? Where did, if, did you watch and listen as your child was doing the activity and sharing that information helps to build a more comprehensive picture of the child's learning challenges and learning successes and allows for that partnership to flourish. Next slide, please. So two, Implementation toolkits associated with this support role is our Supporting Your Child's Literacy Development at Home Toolkit. This toolkit helps parents and families take part in literacy experiences at home to develop children's reading and language skills. And the other toolkit is called Supporting Students with Reading Needs. And this toolkit was developed in collaboration with the Ohio Department of Education and it has videos of real um, family members interacting with their children and implementing early liter literacy activities that can be replicated at home. So these are really two great um, toolkits to check out. The Supporting Your Child's Literacy Development Implementation Toolkit on the left is focused on pre-K all the way through adolescence. And the Supporting Students with Reading Needs Toolkit is targeted um, more so for students with or at risk for reading disabilities and is focused on early literacy. Next slide, please. And then I'm really excited to share with you our Kids Zone if you haven't checked it out. This is a place where parents and caregivers can participate as their child builds literacy skills and a fun and an interactive way. So this includes, the Kids Zone includes literacy games, audiobooks, ebooks, streaming videos of books read aloud, and our own original comic book series called Uncanny Chronicles, which stars a protagonist with dyslexia. So everything on the Kids Zone has been curated. It is targeted at pre-K through grade five, so focused on really the elementary level. However, it also may be applicable for ch older children who um, are reading at a lower reading level. Um, but what's really great about it is it's designed for kids. And we do encourage family members and kids to engage in the site together. And so to encourage that, we've provided tips for how parents and caregivers can interact with their child when their child is exploring the kid zone. So this was really popular um, over the past year and a half. It, it's also popular during the summer and families can be rest assured that what is in the kids zone has been already vetted and uh, you can search by um, age, you can search by resource type, you can search by literacy skill related to the games. So we hope that it is something that you will share with family members in your location. Jess, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Hi, thanks so much, Sarah, um, for talking us through the other three um, areas where we can really build partnerships and support um, through the family school connection. So for this next part, we are going to take a closer look at some of those additional resources. Um, Sarah has mentioned some of them, and then we have a few that we haven't really talked about um, on the INSOL website, as well as some resources from your very own state of Michigan. Um, so we'll look at resources from both INSOL and from um, the Department of Education with Michigan all around family and school um, communication and relationship building to support students in their literacy development. So as Sarah said um, on her slide previously, she talked a little bit about the Kids Zone. I'm gonna take you back to our website and look where that is and help you locate that um, along with some of the infographics that we highlighted in this session, how to find them. Um, if you have something particular that you're looking for that we have not talked about, um, there may be something related to that on the INSA website. So I'll take you through that section, um, as well as our learning, our learning literacy glossary. This goes back to that co-learn 
um, with partners and family and school connections. So um, as we're working with families and working kind of across the school and the home setting, helping to build kind of a common language and some common terminology um, when we're talking about students and their reading development, in um, the areas that are involved in that learning to read process. And then we'll also take a look at the resource repository. Um, this is the area that um, Sarah and I both kind of very briefly mentioned in some of the earlier content today, but everything housed in this resource repository has gone through a vetting process. It is grounded in what we know as best practices for students and how to support them in their literacy development. Um, and these resource repository um, links and resources are created by other um, organizations and other um, national centers and centers to support students in their reading development. Um, they're not necessarily in school created resources, but it's a spot for us to highlight them and make them really user friendly and accessible um, to folks that are searching for resources in a particular area. Um, of literacy. So I'll demo that and show you kind of where to find that and how to navigate that system. Um, and then we'll look at some Department of Education um, from Michigan resources. So I'll switch back over to my screen share so you can see the website again. And we'll jump to, um, again, improvingliteracy.org is our website for National Center for Improving on Improving Literacy. That's where we'll start is the home on the home page. Um, and on that home page, you have the Parents and Families tab, Schools and Districts tab, um, anything for state agencies. So if you're um, a state agency representative, there is a tab there for you as well. And then Tools and Resources. And this is really the tab we're going to hang out in for the next few minutes together. So looking at your Tools and Resources tab, um, one section to go to is the Learning Literacy Glossary. So as we're thinking about um, just building common language and commonality of terms um, across the home and the school building, this is where we kind of looked at defining some of these key terms with regard to literacy acquisition for students. So you can sort it A through Z, um, technically W, I guess, but in alphabetical order, A to W, um, any terminology, reading development, so you can see phoneme and a definition there, um, phonemic awareness, phonics, and goes kind of on through some of those phonological pieces. On the website, there'll like be little blue words that you can hover over and it will give you the definition from the glossary. So if you're reading something at the school level or if you're at the home and reading information on the website, these definitions are embedded in the website content too, so you don't always have to come to the glossary to look up something if you're not quite sure what it is talking about. Um, if it's a little blue link, you can hover over it often and it will give you the definition um, from the glossary. Another tool within this um, section is the implementation toolkits. We've looked at that already, so we're not going to dive into that um, here. We looked at that earlier in the session. The briefs are here as well in their own um, section. So clicking on the Improving Literacy Briefs will get you all of the briefs that you that we have through the National Center. Um, Sarah has referred to a lot of these throughout um, the part that she had covered um, in our time together. These can be sorted by audience. So if you're coming in as a parent or a family member, you can sort by parents and families. If you're coming to the site from a school or a district, level and kind of looking for resources through that lens. There's a sort for that, that function as well. And then again, state agencies can sort um, based on information they're looking for at the state level. And then any topic. So for example, if I am someone from a school or a district and I am looking for um, information around um, partnerships, since that was one of the, the poll indicated, kind of that's what we're kind of here looking for and resources around that area would be really helpful as we're looking to be um, in partnerships with schools and that home connection. I could search for partnerships. And then in that filter, it will bring up, when we talked about this, this is one of those resources that Sarah highlighted in that partnership piece. The route to reading is an infographic. Once you click on the infographic, it will give you more information about that infographic and an option to print that infographic. Again, these are free for you to access. So if you find something on here, and you want to share it with your school or you want to share it with um, your grade level team or you would like to share a resource with families from the INSA website like the Kids Zone 
All of these are free. They're all um, kind of open access, open content. So any of the links and any of the resources that you find on the INSA website can be freely shared. That's not always the case um, with materials like this, but anything you find on this website is welcome. We welcome it. Please do share it um, and build kind of that common language and that, that learning experience across those home and school connections. I'll just click on one of these so you can see what it looks like um, to kind of give you more information about it. You'll have the option to download the infographic, a bigger version, of the infographic on the web as opposed to just the screenshot. There'll be related links on that web um, page too that can get you kind of more information that's related to the information you're currently viewing. And then more kind of a write-up or a blurb about each of these resources that goes in um, more detail. And you can see on this particular one, it's kind of geared to the school. That's the infographic we're in. So it's questions for the school to consider as they're looking if they are kind of ready for these um, connections between the home and the school. So from the school, what are we doing to partner with families in our literacy efforts? How are we ensuring families can attend literacy opportunities and are comfortable being involved? So all really good questions for the school to consider as part of your leadership team or if you're working on um, your school improvement plan and are really hoping to bring more families to the table so you have that perspective when you're building your school improvement plan. These are some great questions to sit down and talk through and consider um, with your school teams as you're preparing for the next school year and really looking to build those homeschool connections. I'll get back out of this one for infographics and um, the literacy skills checklist has been highlighted. So that is there. So looking at um, this resource here to look at um, reading skills that students um, have gained or that they have not mastered to help just generalize and personalize some resources that are aligned to your child's particular need. So it's set up as a survey. You can click whether you're the caregiver or the practitioner, and then it'll give you several questions to answer. And based on those answers, it will provide resources that can help support that area of learning for the child that you're referring to as you um, click through and answer the survey questions. So great resource there when you think about, oh my gosh, there's so much information on this website, um, how to really fine tune it and get resources that are going to help with your child at home or a particular child that you're working with um, in the school setting and then having the ability to share those resources back and forth. So that'll help kind of narrow the focus down um, within the resources that are housed here on the website. And then the last one I want to highlight um, in our time together is one of my favorites, and it is the, um, uh, the Kid Zone. So looking at your website fam Parents and Families tab, when you click on that tab, if you scroll down to about middle of the page, um, the Kid Zone is there. So, and it is literally a literacy playground. So like if you've got students or um, family members that are in your homes that are really into playing games, now they can play games and learn at the same time. And you know that the things that are coming from this website are actually grounded in um, some educational research and they're super, super fun. Um, so if you click on Kid Zone. Uh, it has the Uncanny Chronicles, that's the comic book that Sarah referred to earlier. And then from there, um, there's lots and lots of games to play. So one, um, and this one has the age range, so one of these is looking at phonemic awareness and it takes them through this kind of camping adventure um, with a few characters and some fun things along the way as they master um, skills and phonemic awareness. So you'll have that as an option if you've got some students that you're working with that are ages four through six and are developing um, phonemic awareness skills. And then you've got an option to um, search different um, resources to here. Again, that you could research and find um, what exactly are you looking for in that particular section. So. Lots and lots of kid resources that can all be filtered by age, can be filtered by type, what you're looking for, and then those specific skills that you're really hoping to hone in on. So um, for the gamers and those um, the kiddos in your life that really, really love to 
have their um, hands on games and that interactive learning through um, some, some games. This is some of those, these are lots of options for um, getting some of that connection um, and using it you know, productively to be able to hone and build reading skills as well. So great resource for those of, um, of you out there that are looking for resources that have been curated, that you know are um, high quality, and that also builds students' reading skills at the same time that they're playing a game. Um, so those are um, resources there for the kids zone. I'm gonna stop my share with you here and kind of wrap up our time together with the slideshow today. So looking at your screen share again for our um, kind of wrap up for our time together, Michigan resources are here too. So you've got some family engagement resources from Michigan Department of Education around um, building that collaborative relationship between families and educators and providers. There are leadership strategies, and I'll drop all these links in the chat box um, as Anna's kind of closing us out today. So you'll have these resources available to you. But looking at leadership strategies, again, as you're putting together your school improvement plans and how to involve families, lots of great resources um, from the Michigan Department of Education around strategies to build that homeschool connection. And then recently released is an, equ um, an equity and literacy. So taking that homeschool connection even deeper and really considering um, equity in education and looking at that family school connection through an equitable lens as you're supporting students in your school buildings and in their home and their larger um, community. So I'll drop these resources in your chat as well. Um, wrapping up kind of our time together today, we spent some time talking about building a system of support, um, really playing to the strengths and the common um, assets that schools and families bring to the table with really supporting students in their learning. School and family partnerships, being co-learners, co-advocates, really partnering and co-supporting students in our buildings and in our homes, and then those Michigan-specific resources. And I'll get those dropped in the chat box so you're able to read. Um, you don't have to Google search those. I'll get them, get the links for you so you've got easy access there. So I'll turn it back over to Anna as she's wrapping you up today and giving you your sketch code. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box um, as I'm putting links in there, and we'll try to get some questions answered before you all leave today. So thank you for being here. Thanks for taking time with Sarah and I um, this afternoon. And Anna, I'll turn it over you to you to you to close out the session. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jess. That is amazing. I cannot believe how many resources you guys have developed and posted uh, for free on your website. It's pretty incredible. All right. I've got... One more thing to share here. So just a couple of reminders. Um, we do have a conference um, feedback and evaluation survey that you can find in the resources tab. If you are attending tomorrow, you can just complete it after you've attended all sessions tomorrow afternoon. Um, but if you're not returning to us tomorrow, we do ask that you take just a few moments. Um, you can uh, complete very brief feedback or expanded feedback on anything that you attended today. And then um, our informational booths will begin tomorrow again at 8.30 in the morning. And we'll um, stop those at about 8.50, 10 minutes before the morning breakout sessions start. Um, so feel free to um, check those out. You can go in and look at any of the pre-recorded um, pieces um, and see anything that people put into the chat um, that uh, happened today as well. And finally, I've got your sketch code for you. So ESS2A is what you'll want to put into your form for this afternoon breakout session. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much, Jess, and, and to Sarah, too. Thank you all.